Hello, everyone. Welcome to Real Guitar Live. I'm your host, Thomas Michaud. You probably already knew that. And I'm going to do my absolute best to answer all your guitar related questions. Now, I'll start with the pre submitted questions. And by the way, you're always welcome to pre submit a question. Sometimes it gives me a little time to even formulate my answer a little more. But you're welcome to add questions in the chat. I'd really encourage you. And if if you have a follow up question to one of the questions I'm answering, put that in the chat. If you could, please start with the word question. That way, when I look down the questions, I can quickly separate it from the comments. Otherwise, I'm, I may skip over your question. Uh, in any case, let's get started. I'm going to just quickly put a banner up that for people who will come in late to remind them to add the questions. So let's start off with the oh by the way at the end of this i'm going to do a drawing for people in my real guitar success membership who have completed the lessons for march it just means that they there's a guitar session each day monday through friday and they go in there and spend a minimum 10 minutes on it even if that's just watching it check it off at the end of the month all they all those people get entered into a drawing and i give away a 50 dollar amazon gift card just for fun so with that said, let's start off with the first question. And it's a good one. I would like more information on hand stretching techniques. Could you demonstrate the stretches you do? This is Tim. Yes, absolutely. As a matter of fact, I went through my hand stretching this morning anticipating this question, and it really helped me out uh, before I started my practice session. So to start off with, I'm going to show you a little routine and it, it'll take longer to explain it than to actually do it, especially once you've done it a few times. Let me put my guitar down. This is all without the guitar, and I'll show you something with the guitar at the end. So first, I like to give my forearms a little massage. And what I'm doing is kind of pushing the blood towards my hand. Now, I'm told by therapists that this actually can help your lymph nodes as well. And they're recommending the whole arm, but I've shortened it to, for the guitar practice, guitar players. And I'll do both arms and see, I'm just taking my thumb and kind of pushing the muscles a little bit. It should be relaxing. Obviously, you don't want to push so hard that it's painful. And that's a rule with all of this. If, if it hurts, that's probably too much. If it's a little uncomfortable, that's okay. But if, if it hurts, it's a little too much. And let me also say, I'm not a physical therapist. And if you have a particular pre-existing condition or, or something un, out of normal, you probably would want to check with a doctor or, or a PT, a physical therapist. So always go slow and pay attention to what you're doing. Kind of listen to your body. Are you, are you pressing too hard? Are you pulling too hard? The next exercise, that was number one. Now I'm going to just massage my fingers. It feels good. <laughs> I've already been practicing, so yeah, they're, they could use a little massage. Mm, yes, okay, and I'm kind of going fast. You want to go a little slower. As a matter of fact, I found that I have a tendency to, even in my own practice, to go a little faster than I should. I just have to keep reminding myself to slow it down. Now, the, I call this the thumb pull. I'm going to use my thumb and pull down my fingers. So I'm just stretching a little bit. Yeah, just to where I can feel the stretch. And it actually feels good to me. If it hurt, I, I'm doing it too hard. Next finger. Okay, I'm going to do every finger. So again, I'm going a little fast. Let's slow it down so you get an idea. You want to hold a little bit, maybe five seconds. You kind of feel it out. It's not an absolute amount of time. I've never thought of that, but I, I think it might help to gain, give you an idea how to slow it down. If it's one second, it's probably not enough. The stretching comes with a little holding there, not just one quick jab at it. Okay, that's all the fingers. Yeah. I think I'm afraid to... I don't want to bore you, but at the same time, I don't want to give you the impression that this is how you do it. Um, number four, uh, this is my favorite, and it goes like this, and I'll explain a little bit more after I do it. 
I put my hands together like in a prayer and press down. Now you should feel a stretch in your fingers, in the tendons, muscles in the hands, tendons in the fingers. I'm just pulling down maybe to the count of five if I had to guess. I don't really count. But now pull in. Now this is different. This is pull, stretching the wrist a little bit. I, I, I can't really stretch my fingers this way. Wrist. And then maybe I'll do this about five times total. Okay. I'm going to shorten it for now. That was only two. Now this is the last time. The last time I'm going to hold it. Let's say for the count of 10, get to where you feel a good stretch and just hold it there. That was the count of 10, right? <laughs> we'll pretend. <laughs> okay. Uh, a little shake in between doesn't hurt, okay? Now, we're ramping things up, right? That was, that was more of a stretch. Warmed up the fingers. And if you do that, you're less likely to hurt yourself. But again, the important point is always pay attention. Feel what you're doing. Don't do it without thinking about it because you can press too hard and strain a muscle. That kind of ruins your practice for the day, right? Or maybe longer. Now, pull back. That looks like this. Put your hands, palm facing outwards. Pull back the first finger. Now, you want a little extra? Wiggle the other muscles. Oh, yeah. That I can really feel. If that's too much, just a light pull back and hold it. Okay? Wiggle to feel how much I'm doing, yeah. And then the next finger, pull back. Wiggle, optional. Wiggle's optional. And wiggle, it's strenuous for me, but I'm careful not to pull too hard. And the pinky, this pinky is broken. I cut it when I was younger, but I can still stretch it. Uh, it actually feels really good. Oh, now that doesn't feel good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was a stretch. Let's do the other hand a little bit. I just don't want to be warped here. I, I'm, I'm sure you get the idea at this point. I'll, I'll speed it up a little bit. Huh? Okay. And then this pinky is nice and straight. Oh, uh, well, I forgot the wiggle, huh? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, this hand's a laser for some reason. It's the way it is. Today. <laughs> Might change tomorrow. Okay. Ah, I like to shake out a little in between. Optional. Now, this next one I call the judo handhold because years ago I also learned it as a way to subdue somebody. You take your thumb, hang out your hand, let it relax, then take your thumb and just pull it towards your wrist. Now, pay attention. Too much will hurt you. Just a little bit till you feel a stretch. Better to go light in the beginning. You can always, as you progress, try a little bit more. First time, really light. Just get a feel for it. Okay. Hold it. Maybe a five or so. The other hand. Yeah. Should be relaxed. Should be able to move your hand. Okay. Next, the wrist twist. I'm going to put my hand to my face, the palm, and twist away from my face and down. Now oh, that feels good to me. Yeah. Again, I'm just to where I feel a stretch. Now I like to, optional, also press straight down a little bit. I'm doing the opposite that we did earlier for the stretch for the wrist from, from this or this rather, the opposite stretch. Okay, that one feels good. Now do this. Again, it takes a lot longer to explain than to actually do this. And again, slow, hold it, pay attention. Yes, I feel it, not too much. I'm gonna go down too, I like that. Okay, yeah, not too much. Oh, I could hurt my wrist that way. I realize that. It's nice and easy, gentle. Uh, let's do the figure eight now. Relax. Hands together. And it's, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? You just, just find a way to 
roll your wrist around. You're doing this. Other way. Yeah. That's relaxing if you do it within a relaxed way. Now, number nine, stretch the fingers. I'm going to put my hand out, a palm away, and stretch. Actually, it doesn't matter if you do it this way. I think, but I'll go this way. And then put your other hand between the fingers and push between them. Gentle. Mm-hmm. And we're getting ready for the guitar, right? You're going to need a stretch there. Hold it. And again, I do just a little longer than I'm doing now. Let, let me see. Maybe about this long. One, two. Let me try this way. It's about the same. Three, four, five. Yeah, five seems about right. Count of five. Not one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> one, two, three. One, two, three, four. That one was a little harder with that pinky. And then finish up with a good shake out. Okay, so that probably took 10, 11 minutes. I did this this morning uh, and it took me about, it took me five minutes. Literally, I stopped at five minutes. I looked on the clock. So once you get into this uh, and it gets to be a habit, it's much easier than what I'm doing here now. And you don't have to do every single exercise, but I would encourage to think of it as a progressive. In other words, do a little massage first because it's going to be safer to start stretching your hand if they're warmed up a little bit. And after I did this for five minutes and in my practice, I was amazed, actually. It, it felt like I'd been playing for 20, 30 minutes. It was, <laughs> I have been lax in doing it fully. I often shorten it to just this. And I'll do this throughout the day. I just hold it for 10 seconds. And if nothing else, this really helps me. But if you do this warm up before you start practicing, you're less likely to hurt yourself in the, in the beginning of doing these kinds of things. Okay, now, one more. Now we're going to the guitar. I call this a warm up exercise, but it is also stretching your fingers. First of all, the principle is that the frets are wider apart next to the headstock as opposed to up here. So we're going to start this exercise right here. One finger per fret. Now, if that's a stretch for you, this is the exercise. That's enough. So the idea is you're stretching your fingers a little bit. Then go to the next string. Just down pick. Don't worry about doing anything fancy. You can even use your, without a pick with your thumb. The idea is just to hear that the sound is good. Because see, it's doubling as a kind of warm up for getting your mind in line with your fingers. What you're trying to do is slowly put your finger in the right place on the guitar and you're letting your mind memorize that particular spot right next to the fret, nice clean sound. And by hitting the string, you hear if you got a good sound or not. But the stretch comes whether you hear it or not. And you do all that all the way up to the first string, right? Maybe back down as a warm up. Go really slow, go for accuracy rather than speed. You can speed it up as you get comfortable with it, always giving prominence to accuracy as opposed to just going faster. Now, if the next step is to go down a fret, but only if this is a mild stretch or no stretch. As you go down a fret, you do the same thing, and you're stretching the fingers a little more because the frets are wider apart. You keep doing that until you find where you're stretching enough. And that might be here, that might be right here. If you find that even right here, you can't get your pinky all the way up here, check your hand position. That's the first thing to look at. If your hand is this way, it's a, a much bigger stretch to get your pinky over there. Line, get your hand more in line this way. It doesn't have to be exact. I go for a balance. I like it a little bit angled, but not 
so much angle, I can't get my pinky over. See, even I can't get my pinky there if I angle it enough. Keep your elbow relaxed at your side, not tucked in, but just hanging there. The idea is if you were to release the guitar, your hand would just fall off. See, if you tense up, it actually makes it harder to stretch. Now, as you get closer to the neck, you're gonna find this is much more of a stretch. And if my elbow is out here, I can't even, I'm having a hard time making that. I can reach it, but I can't press down very hard. Ah, got it. Relax, hand lined up, no problem now. Again, pick where you're at. This, if you're in the beginning stage, is very likely plenty to start with as you warm up. Maybe three minutes on this, when you start your guitar, two minutes even. I have more exercises, um, <laughs> you know, some real stretching, <laughs> this kind of thing. Um, but I won't go into that. That's, I don't want to even insinuate that you should jump into that kind of thing. But I will give you uh, a link in the show notes to more warm-up exercises, in particular, on the guitar. Some are more stretchy, and some are just warming up the fingers in other ways, getting them to move properly. Let's go on to the next question. Can you, I can't seem to find a spider or similar warm-ups in the Real Guitar Success. Uh, can you help me? Sure. Well, first of all, let me just do the spider. I'll show you the spider exercise. This is one of the, my favorite exercises for warming up. It's very similar to what we just did with a slight change. And I'm gonna do it without a pick first. No pick, no sound. Finger down, right? Just like we just did. Next, next, next. But, and when we go to the next string, I leave the other fingers exactly where they are. Over. Then the next finger, over. See, those two fingers are down. Third finger, over. Fourth finger, down. Over. I usually have students start without a pick, just to get the movement. Over, 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 over. All the way to the first string. And then... When that's okay, going back to the low string, the low E string. Next, next step is to do it with a pick. Now oh, I'm listening for accuracy as well. See, I'm adding a little more, you know, mental gyrations there. I'm, I'm following my fingers to hear with my ears to hear if I, I'm getting a sound. This, no, okay, I'm gonna move my finger just a little bit over. First finger, over, second finger. The other thing I'm looking for is that my fingers aren't angled down too much that I'm muting the string. See, too much. There, angles back up. I pushed my, my elbow up just a little bit. That was a half an inch, I'd say, that did the job. Okay, I'm, I'm going on. <laughs> a lot of talking there. <laughs> over, 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 and so on. Muted, move, move your hand a little bit, get a little better angle. And what you're trying to do is avoid hitting the next string. That's the spider. So that said, again, that's one of many exercises I have in Real Guitar Success. It's called supersonic exercises, guitar exercises. And I'm gonna show you where that is. Let me see if I can use the present mode. Uh, let's try it, how are we doing? Okay, that worked. Here's where you'll find that in Real Guitar Success. You go to the dashboard, go down to RGS University, and I will we'll give you a quick um, warning. In about a month, this dashboard will change the looks of it in a bit, but it'll still be very easy to find this. It'll be very obvious, RGS University. Go there, now you'll find a bunch of courses, and we want supersonic warm-ups, guitar warm-ups, supersonic guitar warm-ups. The one with my little snowy, that's my doll I was brought up with <laughs> as a baby. That's not the original, by the way. The original, you wouldn't want to see it. <laughs> it looks terrible, but some, my aunt uh, gave me uh, the same doll in a new version for me to see what it looked like. Mm, and then you'll find a bunch of exercises. The, uh, the warm-ups, um, I've diagonal, there's some finger-style warm-ups things to warm, to help you with hammer-ons and pull-offs, stretching, of course, um, and so on. That was 
Stretchathon is a good one. Spiders right there, the no pick and a pick version. Okay, so, and I will make sure I uh, also put a link to that. That would be for members of Real Guitar Success. Next question, what type, this is Ger, Ger Gerard, what type of guitar would you recommend for kids under age of 12? So I will say my first choice usually is that Yamaha three-quarter style nylon string guitar. The model, I wrote it down as a CGS 103A with a two after it now. I guess they have, they keep making different versions, so they add a two to it. It's just a three-quarter inch nylon guitar and Yamaha makes a good guitar for, for the money in that price range. Matter of fact, in general, for the, you know, two, three hundred dollar price range, Yamaha makes some of the best guitars. Their quality and their quality control is really good. A Fender makes a similar version. It's probably just about as good. It's about the same price, I think. Nylon strings are easier on the fingers. I found that children, I own a music school, so we have lots of kids, and I find that they tend to get discouraged if it hurts their fingers too much. Metal strings hurt your fingers. Everybody's different. If you're super dedicated and you want to play metal strings, your kid wants to play metal strings, especially if you've got parental support, they're encouraging and supportive, you can go with it. If you do choose a, a guitar with metal strings, and preferably a smaller one, a three-quarter is one terminology for smaller guitars. Travel size is another uh, term that's used for smaller guitars. You'd probably want to put some light strings on the acoustic if you, if you try that. Or some strings called silk and steel. That's kind of a hybrid between nylon and steel. They're soft on the fingers. That's another way to go. Get a small three-quarter guitar and put silk and steel on it. I don't think they sound as good as the metal strings, but it's a good compromise. And you can then you got a guitar you could always put metal strings on as your fingers get tougher, as your child's fingers get tougher. <laughs> um, uh, my next choice might be actually an electric guitar. If the kid is really into that kind of music and that's what he's hearing and they got parental support. The thing is electric guitar has very light strings. It's actually fairly easy to press. I get a lot of parents saying, I don't wanna, I don't wanna give my kid electric guitar to start off. They should start on acoustic. I can't think of any real good reason other than tradition that you have to start on the acoustic. I do still start most kids on acoustic if all things being equal, it's, it is lighter and it's less expensive in the sense that when the electric guitar, you get electric guitar, you have to get an amp too. So it adds a little to the expense. It doesn't have to be louder. You can turn down the amp or even play without the amp with a headphone. So that's not uh, really an issue, but the strings are pretty light. The metal strings are very thin on electric guitar. Those are my thoughts. I'm sure there are different opinions and there's no one absolute right way to do this. Um, another question is, are there any suggestions for getting reluctant people to sing who are, who are well able to play all the basic chords and strums? Um, that's really not my area of expertise. I honestly have never um, taught singing or encouraged people to sing. Um, so I'd be curious if some of you out there have some ideas, especially if you have some experience with this, I would love to hear it in the comments, uh, to see it in the comments. And of course that would help answer this question and I'll collect those for if somebody asks in the future too. Um, yeah, I, I'll leave it at that. Um, I can't, yeah, I can't say anything that would come from a place of experience or that I really know. Next question. I'm working through the fourth ad, uh, adventure in the beginner's journey in real guitar success. I'm working towards 80% goal. What he's saying is that we have a, a saying that you, you don't want to try and perfect everything before moving on to the next exercise or lesson. Get to where you feel you've gotten about 80% and then move on. That way you're not going to get stuck, but at the same time, you don't want to just brush over something, not really get it, and then move on. You're just going to get overwhelmed and, and feel like you, you can't really go forward at some point. So the 80% goal is what he calls it. I'm wondering whether I should go back to 
adventures two and three to sharpen them up. Otherwise, what I, I feel like, how do I master them? I feel like I have a lot of lessons I haven't mastered and I'm getting further behind every day. Great question. I, I know that feeling actually. So here's a way to think about it. First of all, the reason 80% works is because if you actually get to where you really feel like you've gotten about 80%, when you go on to the next one, your next lesson, next lesson, next lesson, you're still improving. And in fact, if you were to go back to that lesson that you did, you know, five, 10 lessons ago, you're going to be better at it than you were if you just stuck there and tried to master it one take through. You don't really have to go back to the earlier sessions to master them because what you're mastering is playing the guitar, not mastering each lesson. It doesn't really matter that you master that particular lesson. What we're doing is moving forward on playing guitar in general. That said, it's a valuable strategy to go back and review from time to time. I would recommend if you really feel like you want to go back to level three and review some of those, do it. Complete level four and then go back and review level three. It will confirm that in fact, actually you are progressing. You'll find some of those exercises in level three easier than the first time you went through them. Um, I often, when I'm doing a course that's, you know, has several levels, I'll go through the course fairly quickly at first, one time through, knowing as soon as I get to the end, I'm going to go back and start over and really try to work. I'm still not trying to master 100%, but I might shoot for 85, 90% of feeling. Going for 100% is death, is death. You will get stuck at some point and just never move forward. It doesn't work. Never go for 100% mastery. Go for 80, 85, 90, 98% even. If you're getting ready to perform something, go for 99%. But 100% is, is a real mental hurdle to uh, get over <laughs> and to be able to move forward. Now I'm talking about lessons and I'm talking about lessons that are, um, you know, in sections and, and it, there's different levels of, of uh, lessons and you're going through the journey. If you get to the end of level six and you really feel like you can't play the basic chords that, that was taught in level three and four, you probably didn't get to 80%, quite frankly. Um, you, you need to adjust your perception of what 80% is. Um, and that's part of the game. As you go through this, that's, you are training yourself to see what 80% actually is for you before moving on. Again, review is, is a good strategy. Go back and review the basic chords and do the exercises and then move forward again. Mm. The same person is asking, I'm working through beginner's journey four, and I'm starting with the bar chord program. Does that make sense? It is a personal decision. There's no absolute right or wrong here. Bar chords are different than the chords that you're learning in the beginner's journey, the open chords, I call them. And the early, the first couple of um, adventures in the bar chords are not very hard. I'm basically not having you play full bar chords, but just preparing. And we're doing things to prepare for bar chords. So it can work. And what I, I want you to keep an eye on is not feeling overwhelmed. The reason I generally tell people to complete levels one through six and then go to the bar chords is because people spread out too thin and they can't, they feel like they're not making progress in any one thing because they're trying to do too many things. They get overwhelmed and then quit. And that's a sure way to stop progressing. <laughs> they get frustrated with themselves. You want to always manage your feelings about how you're learning and progressing and not go for overwhelm and not go for feeling like you're just not getting anywhere. Sometimes that's a good time to review if you're feeling like you're not getting anywhere. It's like, as long with the actual technical benefits, when you review, you're confirming you actually can do some stuff. So I will leave the final decision up to you, but I will say when you get to around the third or fourth adventure, it's going to get more difficult and it's probably going to be to your advantage to at least finish the beginner's journey. 
before you try to tackle the later adventures in the bar chord, only because you're using techniques that you're not using in beginner's journey, and you're going to need to practice both, and it's going to require a lot more practice. Depends. If you're willing to practice an hour or so a day, that could work. And you you know yourself well enough to know you're not going to get frustrated and quit because you're dealing with some difficult things. For most people, it will pay to kind of go a little more in order. The first level in the beginner's journey, good warm-ups for bar chords. You can always do that. After that, you probably finish level six, adventure number six, and then go on. And in the beginner's journey, adventure six, and then go on to bar chords. While you're doing the guitar sessions. So that's the one thing I left out. If you're going on to bar chords, you probably should be doing the guitar sessions also. The guitar sessions, one a day, just spend 10 minutes on a day. You can have a different lesson that sometimes includes bar chords, sometimes doesn't, but includes a variety of techniques that are going to build on what you did in the beginner's journey. Highly recommend it. Recommend the guitar sessions before doing the bar chords. Um, you are going to hit some bar chords and it's going to be difficult, but you have a choice always to just kind of skip over that, put a, a, a add it to your favorites, another bookmark it, and save it for later. Um, again, it depends how much you practice and your tolerance for <laughs> a feeling like you can't do something. But um, Don't skip the guitar sessions. They're the, probably the most single valuable part of real guitar success. Next, a couple of weeks ago, I was playing along with a chord changing exercise. It was tough. But I liked it. It was a good challenge. Now I can't find the exercise. I thought it might have been a chord switching game, but I can't find it. Any chance you have an idea where it is? So first of all, let me show you where the chord switching game is. We're gonna. I'm gonna go back to this uh, presentation mode. Let's see. And I showed you how to get to. Um, this is the RGS University from the dashboard. The chord switching game is one of the courses. Go down, chord switching game, and there you are. So there's a variety of exercises on switching chords, and it's very methodical. It starts fairly easy and gets more complex. And I add to this from time to time, especially when I notice that people are having a particular switching problem with certain chords, I'll add a chord switching game to that. It has some animation, so it takes me a little bit to make each one. That said, I don't really know if that's it for sure, and there's no way for me to know. There's hundreds and hundreds of lessons here, and I, I couldn't possibly figure out which one is, is a challenging chord change for you. But I will say this, when you come to a lesson that you like and you want to come back at, save it in your favorites. So here's how you do that. I'll pick the easy G to D. I'm showing the chord switching game there. And you go down a little bit and go to this heart. It's a little box of the heart. And add to collection. That means to my favorites right there. Press on that. Thanks for bookmarking. Now when you want to find it, you go any place that has this top menu and go to uh, favorites. Yeah, that makes sense. And you'll find it, chord switching game right there, along with a, whatever else you put in there. So I hope that helps, Arthur. Uh, let's see, is that how we do that? Yes, oh, I'm getting this. Okay. Um, Next. Now we turn over to the chat and let's see what we got there. Okay, let's take down that banner. What's that say? Okay, I'll leave that up for a second. Uh, let me start from the top and I'm looking for the word question. Uh, and I, I wouldn't have time to read every comment. If I did, you guys would get bored stiff. Question. I have small hands and short fingers. I'm having difficulty forming chords. Any suggestions? Daryl, sure, certainly. Um, my first thought is consider a smaller guitar. 
travel size guitar. Sometimes they're called three quarters. Um, I own for year. I own a travel size guitar. I just like to travel with it because it's easier to carry around. So adults, even with big fingers, can play travel size guitars. It's it's fun. It gives me a chance to play in places I would normally bring my guitar because it's just too big and doesn't fit in the overhead and all that. Um, then there are a lot of technique uh, issues. Of course, I'd have to see your hands and try and form a chord to make specific recommendations for you. But in general, it's likely that you need some help putting your fingers in the right place, angling your hand. Here's things to watch for. Fingers are going up and down. Make sure your arms not pull back too far. It should be hanging more towards your side so that your fingers can go up and down. If I pull back, I can't get my fingers to actually angle. They're, they're too flat, more like this. Um, there are some smaller chords you could start off with instead of doing this full G, because that's a stretch for a lot of people with the fingers going all the way across. Start with a single finger G like this. These top four strings are a G chord even without playing that bass note. The second version of that would be to just add another finger over. So that's a stretch, but it's a little simpler than trying to do three or four fingers. And that's a, a, a on the way. You could do the stretching exercises that I talked about earlier in the um, session here, stretching the fingers and stretching on the guitar. Most adults, it depends on your guitar. If you have a classical guitar, that's the hardest. Classical has the widest neck, nylon string guitar. Full size, I'm talking adult size classical guitar. The child size, they make the neck thinner like an acoustic. The acoustic guitar, most adults, the finger size is not really the issue. They say they have small fingers, but it's, it's technique, not adjusting your fingers to be in the right place and the angle of the hand and the wrist. So those are some things to watch for. I'll probably find a link to some uh, one of my blog posts that has some information about that. This is partly you know, what we do in Real Guitar Success is I kind of build people up to playing simpler chords and then more complex chords so that they can kind of break it down and, and deal with the stretching little by little until they get to be able to play the full, a full stretching chord, even a bar chord. People who thought this was going to be really hard at first, at, at some point say, I don't know why I thought that was hard. Next. Question. I'm doing the beginning Spanish guitar lessons. Cecil, good. And I have been learning the F minor sharp seven for three playable. Cecil, I'm not sure I got this question. Maybe could you try to clarify it? I'm doing the beginning guitar. I got you're doing the beginning guitar and you're learning the F minor seven chord for three weeks. Okay. And I still haven't got it. I got it now. Okay, you're you're working on it. Uh, yes, because it is it is a bar chord. Um, even a simple version is a small bar. So you can make it this way, full bar. You can make it a partial bar. And a a simpler version that doesn't sound as good is just the bar on the second fret across like this. It's not actually a F sharp minor seven, but it's very similar and it can work. That said, Cecil, what I would recommend for you, you have access to everything, is go through the bar chords for every one course. It starts very easy. Just consider that part of your program and just work at it step by step, one lesson at a time. Add that to your practice. Play the, the single version of the F sharp minor seven and and don't worry about getting the third finger on there for now. But you'll see in the Bar Chords for Everyone course, I'll guide you through how to do this and the full bar. If you do it step by step, practice it, this will be easy at some point. It will be easy. I've heard it over and over and over again. People who told me they can never play Bar Chords, they tell me it's easy at some point. It will be the same for you, Cecil.
Ah, uh, that's a good point. Um, this person is recommending a guitar setup. That means check that your guitar, the strings are close enough to the frets, as close as they can get without buzzing. So I'd strongly recommend everyone get a guitar setup. If you haven't, you know, in the last year or two, then a good a repairman will get the strings, make it much easier to play, in other words. And that will help you play bar chords. That will help you play this partial bar. And there are techniques for the partial bar too. When you, if you want to play this partial bar, again, it's, it is in the bar chords for everyone course. But the idea is to get your bar, your finger across the top three strings here. And to do that, sometimes you have to angle back just a little bit to get it to sound good. And then put the pressure on this as opposed to back here. I slightly um, buckle my first knuckle right here. You don't have to. Some people do it like this, but that's going to hold you back in the long run. You can't really play a full bar chord like that. That might help. Next. Oh, Paul likes these stretch exercises. I do too, and I really appreciate whoever asked that question, uh, Tim, because it got me to go back and realize I was kind of corners a little bit, and this is how it is with everything. <laughs> I tend to shorten it to the point where I'm only doing a few of the exercises, and I did the whole routine, and I'm so glad I did. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to commit myself to at least for the next week before I practice to doing that routine, and we'll see from there. Thank you everyone for joining me. I'm at the end of the questions. And if you have a last minute question, I'm going to do the drawing, feel free to add it. And I'll check one more time before we close up for today. Let me put this down. And I'm going to uh, go for the drawing. These are people who have uh, done the guitar sessions one a day, Monday through Friday, just spend 10 minutes on it and then move on. There's a variety of techniques and we combine it into a song at the end of the week. So you'll find a technique exercise, a lick, a chord exercise, and they're all part of a song that comes together at the end of the week. You're learning a variety of both techniques and ways of thinking about learning songs and guitar in general that uh, just by going through the week, even without mastering it, you'll have gained a lot. And about every three months, you'll find some of those same songs come back around. So if you don't get them this time, you'll get another chance at them later and you can see your progress. Even the way I have a way for you to write notes now that you can look in the technique and, and add some notes to see what you need to work on some more. So here we go. The drawing. $50 Amazon gift card. We need some music, right? Oh, I don't know. Paul. <laughs> Paul. Paul. Yes, it's the same Paul. You are going to get an Amazon gift card in the email and thank you all for playing everyone who's joined the real win is just spending the time 10 minutes even a day of course you can always spend more if you want i don't see any more questions so i'm going to close up for today thank you all for joining me today i really appreciate your attention and taking this time to hang out with me and the other guitar players we're all in this together and i appreciate you being here Thanks again. I hope you can make it back next time, first Thursday of every month. I look forward to seeing you again. Thanks and see you soon. Bye for now.